Since the fall of 2018, three children have died from influenza-related complications while in the custody of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Customs and Border Protection. Although the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has recommended mandatory influenza immunization for children in these facilities, the policy hasn't been implemented. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Mark Travassos, a pediatric infectious disease specialist and assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Dr. Travassos has co-authored a prospective article about influenza vaccination in U.S. detention centers. Dr. Travassos, you write in your prospective article that before September 2018, no child had died in the care of Customs and Border Protection for a decade, but that since then, at least seven children have died in the agency's custody. So what's changed? A few things have changed in the past year. For one thing, detention centers have become much more crowded with the influx of refugees and asylum seekers, including children traveling with their families or independently. The crowded conditions in these detention centers has been a source of considerable concern. It appears that children and families do not have access to appropriate sanitation, to things like bedding, toothbrushes, or even soap. And these conditions are very crowded. As a result, the conditions are ripe for the spread of infectious disease outbreaks, things like influenza. With this kind of surge in the numbers of people in these facilities, there haven't been appropriate or similar increases in the amount of medical care that's provided and available to people in these centers. And some of these deaths that have happened to children appear to be in part because there has been limited medical attention and evaluation and checkups on people who were appearing ill in these detention centers. And especially with children, it's important that children receive pediatric level care by pediatric trained specialists and further evaluation in centers where there are pediatricians and intensive care units specific for children readily available. And that unfortunately has not been the case. How long do migrants and asylum seekers typically spend in Customs and Border Protection custody before they move on to other facilities? And why do you think it's important that they be vaccinated against influenza at that stage? So children and other detainees are held by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection for a period of 72 hours before further processing. And that is the maximum length that they're supposed to be held under the care of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. However, in part because of these crowded conditions, detainees are being held in these facilities longer than this three-day period. In fact, two of the children who died from influenza-related illnesses were actually being held in these facilities more than five days. And so this was longer than the intended period, and it appears that the amount of supervision that they had was not what was appropriate at that time. And so this is the first point of access to this very vulnerable population. And it's a point where, critically, If we implement a measure like a flu vaccine, we can really provide an important and life-saving measure at the very initial point when they come into the care and the protection of the U.S. government. After that, they potentially may be sent back to Mexico to centers there, or they may be sent on to other federal agencies. But this is kind of a crucial point where if there is a clear procedure, we can actually provide an important public health measure that can save lives. So the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has recommended mandatory immunization in these facilities. What reasons do Customs and Border Protection officials give for not offering vaccination? So Customs and Border Protection gives two reasons why they will not implement flu vaccination. The first one is that they say that it's logistically challenging. And the second reason is that they say that following processing by Customs and Border Protection, detainees go on to the care of two other federal agencies where vaccination may be available at that point. And so there's no need for them to receive vaccination at this initial point of care by Customs and Border Protection itself. So I think there are concerns with both of these kinds of objections that Customs and Border Protection has. The first one is that logistically implementation of flu vaccine is challenging. However, the logistics of administering a flu vaccine are relatively straightforward. They are simple to administer and the adverse effects are limited. We think that there's no drawback to receiving multiple vaccinations. And so the logistical challenges are not really there upon further scrutiny. The second point that detainees eventually go on to the care of other agencies where they may be able to receive flu vaccines, 
misses that important point where at the point when a child or other refugee or asylum seeker comes into the care of the U.S. government, that is a crucial opportunity where we can actually provide a life-saving measure. And this is a point where the earlier you administer a flu vaccine, the earlier the chance of it having efficacy. In addition, there has been, since 2019, the Migrant Protections Protocols, which actually allows for refugees and asylum seekers to be returned to Mexico after initial detention and before ever being placed in the care of other federal agencies. So as a result, following being under the care of Customs and Border Protection, these detainees would never actually have the opportunity to receive the flu vaccine from any other federal agency. And in Mexico, they are headed to crowded makeshift camps where infectious diseases, unfortunately, can run rampant. You also suggest in your article that influenza immunization be required for employees at detention centers. Is there a precedent for that kind of mandate? Yes, absolutely. So the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices actually recommends that all people who work in healthcare facilities receive the annual influenza vaccines. And so these are healthcare facilities are facilities where places like hospitals where individuals are exposed to the employees in that agency. And so it's crucial to actually help to prevent the spread of disease and to prevent employees themselves from bringing in infections into these kinds of facilities. In outbreaks that have occurred in detainment centers in the past year, U.S. detainment center employees have gotten sick, and this is included in the spread of influenza. So this is a population that we need to protect and as well prevent from being vectors of disease in these detainment centers to the people that they care for. Looking more generally, what kinds of medical care are available at these detention centers and what public health measures exist to prevent the spread of disease? There is some medical monitoring that happens, but oftentimes it comes down to detainees bringing themselves or others to the attention of the guards that are present. And in the cases of other children who've passed away over this past year, it has been apparent that the supervision of children who are sick and in these detainment centers has been lackluster, including a child who had been sick from the flu, who was receiving medication for the flu, and was supposed to receive hourly checks by detainment center employees, but apparently did not receive those hourly checks during a critical period when they actually passed out from illness and was eventually found several hours later already deceased. So this points to the need for higher numbers of well-trained healthcare workers at these detainment centers, including healthcare workers who have experience in treating, diagnosing pediatric illness. As well, there does need to be consideration of other public health measures, things like vaccines outside of the influenza, There have been outbreaks in the past year of mumps and chickenpox, both vaccine-preventable illnesses, and neither of the vaccines that prevent those illnesses are currently available to detainees in these centers. So finally, given the lapses that led to the deaths of these children and the outbreaks that you've just mentioned, has the agency implemented any changes in response? So in December of 2019, the agency issued guidelines on having increased medical interviews of detainees. But these guidelines do not make any stipulations for implementation of things like flu vaccines or increased access to pediatricians or other healthcare workers. And so unfortunately, there have not been any significant measures that provide real optimism that detainees, this highly vulnerable population, will be receiving better medical care. In fact, I think it's been clear that As concern has mounted in the public about the care of detainees, especially of children, just the opposite has been happening. In other words, Customs and Border Protection, as you mentioned, has decided against vaccinating individuals. And some of these individuals now are being returned more aggressively across the border to Mexico, where illnesses and outbreaks are not closely monitored at all. And so this is a kind of a confusing and a difficult situation, and advocating for the health care and the rights of these individuals is paramount at this kind of crucial juncture. Thank you, Dr. Trossos.